friend of mine dropped this bass by. It's a stag, as you can see. And for those of you who don't know, it's a Music Man Stingray copy. Stingray, what a great name for a great bass. And as you can see, it's like, it's like brand new. Big problem with all those basses is what you can adjust easily is the string height, I guess it's called. I've already been taking the strings up, but they were pretty high, so we have to adjust here, the truss rod. And you have to tighten all the screws that most of the times are loose here on the bridge. And here, since it's a bolt on neck, tighten those and uh, check out the machine heads if anything needs to be tightened there. So that's what I'm going to do right now and put the strings on. Okay, so take a string, unwrap it. It's got a little hole there that I have to put it in. And up here. Boom. As you can see, it's just a little bit too long. But I learned from uh, Scott at Scott Bass Lessons. You should check his site out, he's great. You have, to, you have to do like this. And that. Cut it off here. So it looks like this. Scott, I'm hope I hope I do it right here. You have to correct me otherwise. Okay. So now put it in here. And and go like this. And tighten it up. What you have to do all the time is like when you have new strings on, you tune the bass, then you stretch the string like this. And you tune, stretch, tune, stretch a couple of times. And it will stay in tune. Okay, all the strings are on. I've been stretching them out, stretching, tuning, stretching, tuning. And I don't know if you can see this correctly, but the string height, or what it's called, it's, as we say in Swedish, it's pretty high. You obviously need an elevator to get down to the frets and push it down. So what we have to do now is take, I think it's English, it's called, I don't know, I don't know what the heck it's called. In Sweden it's called an insect nickel. Put it in here and we have to adjust the neck. Okay, so I have uh, tightened the neck up and I have tuned the bass up again. So what I do is put a finger here on the first fret on the F and I put like my thumb on, I don't know, fret number 12. And then I push down here in the middle and see that it's, uh, it should be like a millimeter as we say in Swedish, or millimeter, shall we? The metric system, you know. That looks good. Next step. Get one of those, which I still don't know what they're called in English. And make sure it fits here on the bridge so you can adjust, how do you say, the string height. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, folks, very important intonation. What you do then is you take your G string, for example, make sure it's in tune. There, perfect. Then you take a finger. Put it on the 12th fret. Hard to say in Swedish. Anyway, that's where you have two dots on the neck. Push it down there and check. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's moving that way, so it means that it's too low. What you have to do then is to adjust here. Take a screwdriver, put it here, make sure that this piece moves a little bit closer to the 
make. I have been adjusting this piece here, whatever that is called. Cold, cold, cold. Ah, excuse me. Anyway, the G-string is in tune now, and if you push down on fret number 12, it's still in tune. That means that this string is intonated. So what I have to do is just go through the rest of the strings and do the same. The bass is in tune. It's intonated. The neck is adjusted. So it's time to plug it in, see what it sounds like. So for all the sound examples in this video, I'm going to use an old J station. Um, it looks like an old pod and it's, it's really old. It's from 1992. So it has three different uh, bass amps in it. So it's not much compared to what they have these days. One is an uh, Ampe and the other one is a Trace Elliott amp. And the third one is an SWR amp. They used to be real popular way back in the early 90s. I don't know if the company is still around, but it sounds like this. For this example, I'm gonna roll off the tone knob. Use the Ampeg bass head and uh, play a little reggae. So for this example, we're going to use my funky Alessis SR16 drummer and uh, use the Ampeg bass head, play a little funk. Time for the Trace Elliot amp and time for some basic rock and roll. So it's the Trace Elliot again and it's the Alessis drum machine again with an old R&B groove, at least that's what they call it. So this is the Ampeg head with a blues rhythm. So it's time for the SWR head. A little soft stuff here, see what it sounds like. So all in all, what can you say? It, it, it's uh, for the money. It's really a good bass. I mean, used one at 
least in Sweden, it's like a hundred dollars, or as we say, a hundred and fifty dollars is like two thousand to fifteen hundred kronor, kanske. Used and uh, I think they're new. They're like three hundred dollars, three thousand kronor, nothing. True, yeah. So, if you're looking for a cheap bass, that's pretty good. Here it is. <laughs> 